And now it's time for Photo Booth Live Chat with John Young. And welcome to tonight's show here on PBN TV. I'm John Young, your host. And tonight, we are going to be looking ahead at Photo Booth Expo 2020. And my guest tonight is Justin Jowett. Good evening, Justin. G'day. How are we doing? It's, uh, it's only lunchtime here in Australia, so I'll say g'day, which covers all periods of time. There we go. We'll go that way. So, yes, this is Lunch with Justin today coming to you. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're probably not having a peanut butter sandwich I had for lunch today, but that's another story. <laughs> When you're working, in, we're in that, that crunch time right now. For those of you who aren't, uh, maybe have been hiding under a rock, Photo Booth Expo is coming up here in a couple of weeks. Two weeks from now, Justin and I are going to be in Las Vegas, probably dead tired by, let's see, this will be 6 o'clock Vegas time. Yeah, we're going to be dead tired Wednesday at 6 o'clock. <laughs> If we're not, something's gone wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's very, very, tr very true. Because, yes, we will have uh, have had Monday, um, and you can go to photobooth.expo.com to check this out, Monday educational content, Tuesday educational content, and then the expo, the exhibit hall opens, Wednesday educational content, and the expo, just a lot of things going to be going on in those those first three days. And then, of course, we have Thursday also. <sighs> it's going to be busy. <laughs> It's a very busy time, but it's so exciting. I can't wait to get back there for my fourth time. It's, it's always a lot of fun. Yeah, oh, it, it is. It is. I, we enjoy just going to Vegas, especially from Minnesota, where it's now like 20 below outside right now. Yay. So for us, oh it's, a, it's like a, a little vacation that way also. But then to go down and see the excitement. I mean, what, for those who have never been there before, kind of explain the first time you walked in and saw that exhibit hall. What were your thoughts on that, Justin? Oh, look, I'm coming from a place where I run a photo booth expo in Australia and we've, we've got about 130 people come to my expo and it's a pretty, you know, relatively speaking, we've considered it a big enough expo. We've mm -hmm. got 20 exhibitors. Yeah. So the first time I've walked into the trade show hall at PBX and we're talking like 100 exhibitors, I just was like blown away. It took my show and then just was like somebody went <laughs> expand, 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 a bit like the Big Bang Theory and it's just, yeah, it's just the most amazing thing Um I liken it to, if anyone's ever been to Turkey and been to the Grand Bazaar, uh, that is a place where, for as far as the eye can see, there are stall after stall after stall. Well, this is the Grand Bazaar of the photo booth industry. So, you know, you'll be with wide eyes, jaw agape, um, reaching into your pocket thinking, am I buying this, am I buying that? It's, it's, it's too exciting. It is, yeah. There's the opportunity to learn about the craft and to see all the newest and, and hottest items that are going to be available for the upcoming season. This is the place to be for that, for surely. And it's, yeah, it's a, a eye-opening experience. <laughs> absolutely, is. absolutely. And, and as you said, it's the, the cutting edge uh, trends and technologies are always at PBX. You know, uh, the things that I've seen there, um, you know, you can you can pretty well time it that it's going to be two years before it really hits uh, industries like the Australian industry, for instance. You know, when when the iPads came in, uh, it basically was a good two years, and then suddenly that became the 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 uh, on point uh, trend down in Australia. So, you know, if you want to be on top of things, you come to PBX and you'll see it. You you know, have your eyes open uh, and start you know be at the front of the wave instead of uh, following it. So, yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, it's a neat, neat experience. Uh, we're going to be uh, in the show tonight. We're going to kind of go look at some of the ways for those of you who can't make it to Photo Booth Expo, ways you can still get 
some of the content from the show. And we'll be talking about that in just a little bit. Before we get to that, Justin, I really want to kind of kind of compare and contrast a little bit. Uh, since you have you you run a show in Australia and yeah. you have been to photo booth. Um, Let's let's look at the average photo booth uh, owners in the two countries. Are there some differences in in their thought process or their how they run the business or how they work or is it pretty consistent? Um, I would, from what I understand of the U.S. market, I would imagine it's pretty similar uh, to the Australian market in the sense that I think uh, we I did a survey uh, a couple of years back um, through a website and we we surveyed about a hundred photo booth operators around Australia and, and we got a sense that. Overwhelmingly, most of them were, uh, you know, mum, dads, or uh, you know, young young people who were starting a side hustle. Mostly, one of them worked full time. The other one maybe either did work full time or work part time. Mm-hmm. And and often they had, you know, little kids at home, and they were looking for a flexible uh, source of income that which allowed them to still, you know, take care of the kids or their own uh, other needs that they've got. And uh, that's certainly the feeling that I that I've taken away from all my visits to the US that, that you've got a lot of people that are in the same boat. You know, they're not looking to be the next big brand or anything they just are looking for a flexible source of income that is fun uh and and you know feels like it's it's something that's engaging to them um and that they can enjoy doing whilst you know living the lifestyle that they want as well yeah yeah that and that's probably the biggest surprise when the very first time i went to photo with expo is the mom and dad uh the mom uh, the mom and pop shops uh, yeah they're just so prevalent and not only were they prevalent in the attendees but they were prevalent with many of the exhibitors also different people absolutely. who have uh, created con- or created things to sell yeah absolutely and, and and that's one of the biggest strengths i think of the industry is that uh you know that we we you know some people will say oh there's such a low barrier to entry and and that causes its own set of problems and we won't go into that right now but i think because of that we we have been able to create a community of mums and dads mums and pops who who you know can help and support each other um and you know live their best life thanks to this amazing industry that we're all part of. You know, you couldn't do that in a lot of other, you know, uh, sectors of, of, of work. You, just, you simply wouldn't be able to do it. We've got such a flexible, uh, you know, source of income with, with this. You know, you, you get out what you put into it. Yep. Uh, if you only want a little bit, you only have to put in a, a little bit to get that out of it. And I, I love that about our industry. Yeah, that is, a, that is a neat aspect of it. You can get in and make some money to supplement that income in the household and get out as much really as you want to put in time-wise. Uh, Absolutely. You mentioned, of course, earlier that the tablet booths, when they started to come on and you were, that was uh, some of the new things you saw up here kind of first is let's, let's looking at the gear and such is, are the tablet booths and the selfie booths, is that something that's really coming on or playing a role in, in your market down there? Or is that something that's not there yet? Or have you guys already gotten past that? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, that's been a mainstay for, for at least the past 12 to 24 months now, the iPad booths or tablet booths, right. um, of the varying degrees. Prior to that, I think the, the, the previous biggest wave was when when enclosed booths turned into open booths. You know, I think it's all pushed towards allowing mums and ladies and maybe people who aren't necessarily able to lift heavy items the ability to to get that into their back of their car uh, rather than, you know, I, I started in the industry, it's 10, 11 years ago now, and when I started, you know, digital center photo booths weighing at 180 kilograms, which is, I think, like 350 pounds or something, yeah, so, yeah. uh, you know, that was... That was the only th- choice you had. So, you know, I, I certainly couldn't have allowed my wife to, to help me with the business. It was, you know, really, I was the muscle uh, as well as doing a lot of the other stuff and you didn't have a choice. But now we do. And I think be- that's because, you know, a lot of ladies and, and, and men don't want to be forced into lifting heavy items. You know, it's yeah, dangerous. Of that and then trying to get a vehicle that can handle and something. Then the you yeah, know. then you've got to get a trailer or a van and, you know, it becomes limiting. Oh, very much so. The, uh, for those of so we go down to Minneapolis and we do events down in, downtown Minneapolis at times, parking and trying to find ways around oh. on these little narrow st- one-way streets. And if you leave a vehicle, is it going to be in one piece when I come back down again? You know, there's all these little things that the smaller, quick in, quick out is really, really appealing in this day and age. Uh, absolutely. And I can only imagine, you know, at least here in Australia, having... having um, uh, trailers and stuff wasn't it was a pain but it wasn't too inhibitive but you know for countries in Europe or you know places big cities uh, yeah. in the US and other parts of the world where like you said you've got narrow streets you've got limited parking you know you couldn't really run a photo booth business very well until now until the last years with, with the open booths and the, and the tablet booths so yeah. you know it certainly opened the market up to, to the whole world 
Yeah, yeah, that it has, that it has. Let's kind of jump into um, a, your website, boothcontent.com. And for those of you watching, that link is in the description below, as is the link for Photo Booth Expo. You can click on that and check on this year's show coming up here February 24th through the 27th. If you're watching this after the show, you can click on that link anyway, because then you'll be able to find information on the 2021 show, which will be absolutely fabulous at the South Point Casino also. Dates will be announced at the 2020 show. So, uh, Justin, tell us a little bit about uh, boothcontent.com. What, what's involved with the website and what are people going to see when they go there? Yeah, absolutely. I'll, I'll take it back a step. So from uh, with, with my show, BoothCon, we've always filmed all the seminars and the masterclasses because there's always been that demand from people uh, who either couldn't make the show or who had been at the show but didn't trust their own notes and their own, own memories to remember all the amazing content that they received. So they wanted to obviously touch that content again later in time down the track. So for the first three years of the show, uh, I, um, I filmed all the videos and all the seminars and masterclasses, and then I made them available via download, um, which worked well. We had quite a lot of people who would do that, but it's time consuming for the consumer. You know, you've got to, first you've got to pay for it, download it and that in itself we're talking a lot of megs of uh, a lot of gigs i should say of uh, video files uh, right. can take a long time and then you've got to store it on a computer or on a hard drive which which doesn't make it so great to access later you, it's not you know it's not instantly there for your um for your needs yeah so this this year we decided well let's let's up the game and let's stream it it's, the time is right that someone needs to start a streaming service uh so initially we we were just working on, on BoothCon becoming the content streaming service for BoothCon. Mm -hmm. But over the years, I've had such a great relationship with uh, the PBX guys, with Bob and Rob, um, and I was sort of telling telling the guys about that. And, uh, you know, we basically realized together, well, why don't, why don't we take care of it for PBX as well? Because there's a huge market for, for PBX. So sure. we've basically expanded the, web, the, the service to, to the PBX uh, uh, market as well. Um, and... Right now, there's all, all three years of uh, BoothCon on, on the website. I'm just about to load up this year's worth of uh, BoothCon content as well. So we had some amazing guys come down to Australia uh, from North America and from Europe. Um, you know, Catalina Block was down there uh, this year. We also had David Miller from LA Photo Party came down, which was amazing. Nice. Yeah. Uh, in addition to some of our local talent like Steve Bleesner from um, the Photo Booth guys, and um, you know, he's a Breeze ambassador. So we, you know, we've got some amazing talent down here, but it's now going to be supplemented by the fact that I'm coming over to PBX this year and uh, my team is going to film all the content there from the seminars and, and that's going to be on the website as well. And, you know, people will be able to jump on the booth content website. Um, we don't want to make it just a paid service. So there's a lot of free content there. Uh, your, yourself, you know, PBN TV is involved in this as well, which I'm really uh, excited to have you guys partner with us yeah. uh, for some free content, um, some other third-party free content that we've sourced as well. Um, and then for those of you that want to access uh, you know, the actual uh, expo content, whether it be BoothCon or Photo Booth Expo, there will be uh, the ability to purchase individual videos, package vi package up videos, so you can get, you know, all the year's worth of BoothCon or all the year's worth of PBX. Mm -hmm. And then finally, if you decide you really love the service and you want to keep getting new content, where well, you can register for the all access pass and, and basically pay a small uh, monthly uh, access fee. And then as we load up all the new content throughout the year, and there will be with this plans to, to get loads and loads of content, you'll just have instant access to all that content as well. So that's certainly the best way to, uh, to get the most out of the service, I believe. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. Now, is, Justin, is there any kind of a minimum uh, quality machine that I'm going to need to be able to watch these? Can I watch it anywhere or on any device? Yeah, you can watch it anywhere on any device. We've got um, the Vimeo service is underpinning the whole website streaming service. So basically, you should be able to access that on your mobile, on your, on your cell phone, you guys call it, um, on your tablet, or on your PC at home, um, or, or Mac, you know, any any uh, internet capable device nice. to be able to access those those videos and stream straight to you. And, and then you can watch them anytime sitting at bed, you know, in the middle of the night, can't sleep, you're thinking too much about the, the highs for the weekend. Well, why don't you learn something about some, uh, you know, digital marketing, for instance? We've got loads of videos on digital marketing. So, you know, it's we're trying to make it as easy as we can for everybody everywhere to access the amazing content that is filmed at uh, PBX and BoothCon, um, and then 
we've got some exciting plans to bring on uh, hopefully some more of the World Expos uh, throughout the year uh, and into the coming period. So, yeah, it's, excellent. It's, stay tuned. It's getting really exciting. Excellent, excellent. So, so as someone who produces a show, you have the content out there and such. What types of, of content has really been kind of kind of ringing, hitting home with your viewers yep. that they really appreciate, whether it's live or on video? Funnily enough, I think whilst everyone initially would say they want to learn, you know, some hardcore details, um, instructional videos, how to operate certain softwares or, or seeing certain um, products in action, for instance, from the stage, what's really resonated with people is a lot of the inspirational talks. Oh. So, so when people get up there and they talk about their real experiences as just a fellow human being running a photo booth business, that seems to resonate really well with people and, and seems to be a, a prime source of motivation. So this year, for instance, we had Mia Hoskin, uh, who will be the first to tell you she's, you know, she's just a you know, normal boother like everybody. Right. She quite shy, getting up on stage is not her usual thing, but she did it. She got up on stage and she gave a really emotive, heartfelt talk um, about uh, her photo booth journey. And that resonated with a lot of people. We got mm -hmm. a lot of great feedback on that particular talk. And people just said they loved how how real she was, how she spoke from the heart. Um, you know, no, it wasn't it wasn't like some all encompassing how to operate a certain thing, but it, it hit people in the in the heart and reminded people why why we all do this. You know, that that it's fun and it brings the fun and uh, you know allows us to to have that uh, flexible lifestyle. So people really really resonated with that. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, I've I found similar things that the ones that. They'll learn the software, they'll learn the sales techniques, but the life lesson that they'll pick up yeah. is the part that will be with them for, for years. I still, there's people who flash back to our 2006 show that we did in Minneapolis, and I'll see them talk about an aspect of that online. It'll be like, oh yeah, I know where they got that from. <laughs> and, and they'll, they'll say, hey, we, I heard this, what, the, what is that, uh, 14 years ago, and it, it still uh, hits home for them, so... Absolutely. And we had um, one of our speakers, he did it for the second year, he's also from, from uh, New Zealand, like Anne Mia, which is uh, Dion. He came up and did a, like a, a haka and kicked, kicked everybody off with this amazing uh, haka style. Had everyone's up and talking, up and clapping. And, Do you know, know? People, people love that stuff, being, being involved in, in the actual talk itself. So, you know, I think you're right. That, that stuff will be the stuff they talk about in years to come more than the, uh, the hardcore content. Let's let's talk a little bit here before we wrap up about uh, the event that you you you're doing at your photo booth show down in Australia for, and the reason why we're going to talk about this for the most of you are from the United States or Canada that are watching this, but if you want to go and take a trip to Australia, yeah. going to the convention makes that trip, and especially the United States, a tax write off. Uh, but we don't give tax advice here. But <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> if you know you were thinking that so justin tell us a little bit about the show when do you guys do it where do you do it and what's what's the details yeah absolutely so you're exactly right you know uh, there's a double um bonus for you guys coming from uh, the states or from canada which is that the australian dollar is worth very little compared to your dollars oh, no. so what that means is uh, and and uh ryan salinas from Superbooth is always loves this he basically calls it his personal 30 percent off discount on everything he does when he comes to Australia because you're basically at, at the current exchange rate for every dollar that you exchange into an Australian dollar you get another 30 cents to spend and the prices are quite comparable here so if you know a can of coke is a is a dollar 50 in the states it's also about a dollar 50 here sure but the difference is you're only paying a dollar 20 for it <laughs> <laughs> because of the exchange is different uh... absolutely so and then in regards to the show itself so we are a much smaller show uh, 130 to 150 people um it's a traveling show as well every year we've we've moved it around because australia is as big as the us uh, flash news flash here to everyone who doesn't know their geography australia is as big as the us we in terms of land mass however we only have 24 25 million people so we're very we've got a very disparate population we're all around the outside of the country there's not there's not many habitable places in the middle so we all live around the outside um, and so to, to reach the main markets here in Australia, I, I've always uh, moved it from uh, Brisbane, which is uh, sort of you know, up in the top half of the country, down to Sydney, which is which is in more in the southern end of uh, the east, our east coast, mm -hmm. and then also Melbourne, which is in the southern end of, of, of the country as well. So we've, we've always moved it around, which gives it uh, you know a, a new and exciting feel every year, as well as the fact that we have 
a really amazing community down here. I, I'm, I'm so proud of our, our community. And that's what all the, the guys that come from overseas say about attending the show or exhibiting at the show is the sense of community that we've been able to foster is, is, is a, something that they haven't experienced at other shows. Sure. And that's, that comes with having only 130 to 150 people. Yes. Uh, you know, that's not a, a criticism of PBX, which has, you know, 4,000. It's very hard to foster a sense of community when you have that many people. Uh, there are little communities within the, within the PBX yeah. uh, crowd, absolutely. But, you know, as far as the show goes, I think that's one of our greatest strengths is that, you know, everybody's in it together. Uh, the exhibitors uh, and the attendees uh, and the presenters, we all sort of mingle together throughout the show and there's a lot of, um, you know, networking that happens and it feels feels very community-like. So, uh, you know, if you're looking for something a little bit different uh, to to PBX or anything else that, that's out there and, and also getting a, um, a great holiday uh, in thrown in the mix that uh, the, the tax department will pay you a little bit for, um, then, yeah, come down to BoothCon. We would normally run in January of every year and we have done for the first four years, but... Um, uh, we're actually going to change it up next year. It'll be in the middle of the year, so I actually haven't confirmed mm. the dates, but it'll probably be in July of 2021, and it will definitely be in Sydney. So if you've never been to Australia, Sydney is the city you want to visit anyway. That's you know that's the number one destination as far as our cities go. So it's a really great time to be considering uh, coming uh, down under and uh, checking out BoothCon and, and uh, Australia as well. Yeah, uh, website where when that information is is out there, where they could check it out. What would that be? So that's boothcon.com.au. Okay. And uh, we've got a newsletter there as well. So if you want to jump on and register for the newsletter now, that will keep you uh, up to date with the latest information. And uh, my first priority when I get back from PBX after filming and getting all the content on Booth Content uh, and getting all that sorted will be locking in a venue and some dates for BoothCon 21. So hopefully by April uh, to May, I should know uh, more details so you can expect an announcement then. Excellent. I think I've got that. Uh, I'll put that link in the description below. For those of you watching the video, if you want to go check that out, you can go click on that link and check that out. Or you can go out to boothcontent.com and uh, kind of see what the uh, whole schedule or the, as far as the process with getting a hold of some of the content to help you grow your photo booth business. Wonderful. Great stuff. We are two weeks, well, not quite two weeks away anymore. What's What's your... What thing are you looking forward to at this year's show before we wrap up? I want to, I, I kind of like to hear this from different people who have been there before because it's like everyone's got a different thing when they go to Vegas of what they're looking forward to. Yeah, I'll, I'll split this into two parts. So I'll take this from a business point of view. From a business Perfect. point of view, I'm really excited about booth content, filming it, and just getting in mucking down with my videography team and getting that content produced and, and created. And that's quite exciting for me on the business side. On a personal side, I just love catching up with all those amazing people that every year I get to meet, you know, a new bunch of people and also get to catch up with the old bunch of people that I've known after the, you know, the previous uh, three times in Vegas. So I just love catching up with people and shooting the shit, you know, and, and having a good chin wag yeah. uh, in regards to everyone's uh, experiences over the last 12 months since I've last seen them. So. Yeah, that's that's the thing I enjoy the most is, is having a beer and, and then catching up with everybody. Yeah, it really becomes kind of that family reunion. Even though there's 4,000 people there, as you say, <laughs> you still end up finding those friends. You just, through the halls, you eventually will run into the crew and it's like, hey, let's go down and have have a drink and, and talk. And, and we, this year we're going to have some different networking spaces so that people can get together just a little bit easier. So it should be a great time for kind of revisiting those, those uh, friendships that we've made over the years. Definitely, John. And I think that's, you know, people often ask me, uh, why should I come to BoothCon or PBX? Why should I go to any show when I can access the content via other means or I could, you know, do my own uh, education, you know, through other means? And it's like, well, yeah, that's important, but you will not get the networking and the socializing aspect and that support if you don't get out and meet people. And, you know, I think that's, that's one of those things where you don't understand the value of it until you've actually experienced it for yourself and um you know i implore anyone who's on the fence thinking about whether or not to attend any of the shows that are out there uh whether it is pbx or, or pbny or boothcon or uh, booth summit you know whatever else is going on that you know that alone is worth the price of entry everything else is a bonus the content you know what you're going to learn but that that networking and socializing it's, it's, it's really amazing value yeah, that it is. That it is. So, uh, Justin, we're going to wrap things up. Um, sure. Again, the website links, uh, boothcontent.com is out there. And then boothcon.com.au, right? 
That's it. You got it. <laughs> Perfect. So I've got them right. Uh, but those links are in the description below. You guys can go check those out. Otherwise, go out to photowithexpo.com. You can check out the educational content, the schedules. It's up the description of who's going to be speaking. Oh, there's going to be a lot of great stuff at this year's show. Justin, Absolutely. Justin, thanks for being on with me tonight. I appreciate your time, and I will see you in just under two weeks. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. All right. Thanks, thanks, thanks everybody. Bye-bye.